Okay, my first year science analyst video. Thanks very much, my first science analyst, for the reasonably, reasonably precise everything. Okay, so we are going to import a a unit a database. I tried to import a JSF database, and I obviously it's not going to ask for those things because I know I didn't ask for those things. So let's see if we can do it. Here we go. File, import, ASCII. I did column file, and this is Fred for twenty. 2022, 2022, we rent, uh, well, the students and Sue at our university went and did a magnetic survey over the Fredford impact structure. And the coordinates you can see, I've already got X in UTM 35, Y in UTM 35, and thankfully the data reading is the original data and diurnal is the diurnally corrected data. I've left all of these um, as is, and I don't quite know how to break it up by lines. Um, so yeah, I'll figure that one out. So click on OK, and you can see these are the data points that it's imported. And on the left hand here under the object tree, you can see ASCII imported, and here's the Freda Fort um, data. Um, I'm not sure if it comes up automatically here, but you can. I think it does once you, if you go here and you click on this 2022 Freda Fort data, it shows you the X, Y, and the Z limits of the data. And the nice thing here, let's just see, if you click on nodes, it shows you the actual data. And suppose as you, well, let's just look at this from the top down, you can see as I move through, there's a yellow point in here that's taking me through the data. So I'm going to go here. One thing you can do is go, so diurnal, as a heading, the diurnal data has disappeared. It's now my Z data. So I'm going to right-click on Z and go paint on Fredafort. So what it's going to do is take these Z values and paint them on these data points. So you can see here um, in the east, there's a magnetic high and we've got some magnetic lows around the area. So that's how you load the data and at least whew, visually you can just see the data values here. So the next thing I would do is how to create a grid. And so maybe this is a long way, but from what I could figure out, you click on Utilities, you click on 2D Grid Designer. Um, so you are creating like a grid object that then is going to grid the data and put it into that object. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Okay, so you click here on Objects, and so I'm, I'm telling it which data I'm going to use to create this grid. The origins of the grid, I don't understand whether it's better to put the origin in the middle or on the side. It's your choice. So it's literally the starting point of the grid. There's probably a logical way to do this that I'm just not thinking about. So I tried to um, get your, let's just do this, uh, to see my data from the top down because it's easier because you actually have to draw the, the outline of the grid. So let's do it again. I'm going to put my, date, my origin down here. I'm sure somebody can tell me why this is not the best place to put it. And then you have to draw an outline for where you want your grid to be. You could probably make it a bit tighter. Okay, so I created the origin down here and I've clicked on this icon here to um, draw the outline of my grid. Cell size, uh, I suppose I've become a bit lazy because Geosoft does it automatically. If you click here, so it's doing it at 10 meters by 10 meters. I can promise you this data was collected a lot more and a lot smaller distance than that. You can see here the distance between each data point it says is one meter approximately. So technically you could grid it as smaller than that. Um, I think people would say a quarter of that cell size um, of that st uh, spacing, but please also remember that dis that's the distance between my data points, and I think this was possibly collected with a walk mag, so that just records continuously, but my limitation is the distance between my lines. So not just my data points, it's actually between my lines, which I haven't really calculated. Um, if we go and take a look, let's see if we can zoom in here. I'm just doing this on the fly. I've never actually calculated distance before in here. Uh -huh. Between the objects, I'm not sure if this is going to, maybe it might. To. I'm clicking the map. No, I think I'm not knowing what I'm doing here. So let me, I'm going to pause, do it in Geosoft, and then come back later and figure it out in Geosoft Analyst. Okay, I didn't have much luck with determining the distances. So let me, mm, so 
one over again. This is my big cell. Okay, well, I'll just hit the origin and I'm going to draw the grid, which I'm still not doing very well at. So it does actually move the origin for you if you do shift stuff over. And I'm going to make my cell size. Um, let's assume that it was like five meters between stations, probably bigger, it would have been about 10, but let's make this 2.5 and 2.5, and you can see it's much higher resolution, and I'm going to call it something, so I'm going to call this further for 2022, and I'm going to click on create, and you can see it put it down here, and close, and then from what I understand, you go utilities, I'm going to use minimum curvature gridding, so the grid is this grid of Object I've just created, the source is the data, the property that I'd like to grid is, let's double check, it can be the Z value here, and I think you can grid multiple things, so you just tick on Z, I have left everything here the same, and I'm going to click OK, and you can keep interpolating, obviously the smaller the cell size, the harder it's going to be. That didn't seem to work. What did I do wrong? Let me pause and figure out why it's not showing up. I figured out what it was. Maybe something I did wrong. But if you click here on the object we just created, this is the grid. And you actually have to select it for it to come up. And so you can see here, I'm going to take off my ASCII data. This is our minimum curvature grid. Ooh, it would be great to display the data points on top of it. Uh, I'm just trying to see. Oh, I think I might have to do that. So at the moment, I just want to put the points on top of the surface. I'll play around with that. But just to see exactly where your data points are, um, possibly if I went back here, oops, and chose not to paint it, and paint. I'll play around this. <laughs> but as you can see, at the moment, you've got a grid of your magnetic data.